I do not want to be hunted by Galadriel. She is strong, she's fast, she freaking runs up swords and stabs snow trolls in the head. I wish she would have stabbed me in the head. What's going on everyone and welcome to the glory hole that is the Rings of Power podcast. Seeing her come to life thousands of years younger as a badass warrior in the Rings of Power, oh, it warmed my nerdy little heart. I want to die. Just let me pass away and I'll be just fine. I am a fan of all things fantasy, especially of Tolkien. Mm, big fan of Tolkien, eh? Well, <laughs> I'm looking forward to this. And now we have eight full episodes of The Rings of Power available to watch on Prime Video right now, creating a new generation of fans. Now, this podcast was clearly recorded before the first episode even aired. Uh, it's highly uh, scripted by, uh, by Amazon themselves. Uh, but, uh, you know, they were so sure they were going to, you know, they were, they were going to get their uh, dirty little claws uh, into the, the demographic that is the younger, the younger youth, the youth, the youthful youth, the, the younger people, uh, the, the more woke young people. They, they, they thought, you know, just, oh, you know look, look at the women, look at the women, look at the people who aren't white men, look at them, don't you like this? And everyone kind of turned around and said, ah, not really. But yeah, they thought they were tapping into the younger, more woke crowd. And sure, you know, the, the kids these days are, uh, you know, they're much more aware of social injustices and the, the plight of the marginalised. But even they don't want, you know, ramming down their throats to the tune of Baradurian bastardization. And I think the statistics speak for themselves. 71% of the demographic was over the age of 35. So, you know, I'm not sure about this whole creating, uh, you know, a new generation of fans. Creating a new generation of fans but you've definitely pissed off the current generation of fans, so uh, well done. Yeah, you know, keep it up. I'll be joined by members of the cast and crew who will share all kinds of behind-the-scenes details that you cannot hear anywhere else. Because you wouldn't want to. Now, this may be because I'm British. If you didn't know this, to British people, Americans can sometimes sound a little bit patronising, and this is because uh, we British people are incredibly miserable. We like two things, and that's complaining and queuing. Uh, and they sort of go hand in hand, because whilst you're queuing, you can complain about the queue. And queuing allows you to complain about it. It's, it's a wonderful vicious cycle that keeps us uh, wonderfully miserable. Now, the point I'm trying to make is, whenever a British person hears an American person, you Americans, you're full of optimism and hope, even in the face of uh, everything that's wrong in your life. Uh, you, you still create, you know, service with a smile and all that, you know. But uh, to a British person, it's just like, the hell is wrong with you? What you're not, what you're not being miserable for? Don't you have something to be miserable about? We can make small talk about the weather if you'd like. Maybe it's that, or maybe it's what I think it is. And this, uh, this presenter of this podcast is just talking to me as though I'm a preschooler who's just recently doo-dooed in my noonies. What the f does that mean? The behind the scenes details that you cannot hear anywhere else. Once again, I, uh, I wanna die. Today we're talking all about episode one of The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power, which is called Shadow of the Past. Joining me will be my new girl crush, Morfid Clark. Oh, not her. Anyone but Steelface McTwitchy knows, please not her. There's something that Gladriel says that with wisdom, there's a loss of innocence. And that was a good gateway to understanding her because she's not young. Now, I've had a few comments over the last few months or so saying, Oh, you're always complaining about Galadriel Johnny. Galadriel is being a dick now because she needs time to grow as a character. She needs an arc. I mean, oh, for, forgetting she's already thousands of years old at this point. How many millennia does this elven wench require not to be a penis? Those comments age well, didn't they? Because if anything, she just became more tyrannical as the series progressed. And if that wasn't enough for you invertebrate bottom feeders, the actress who played Galadriel quoted Galadriel saying that with wisdom comes a loss of innocence and she's not young, but she's not. If you can't learn not to be a dick in a thousand years, you will always be a dick. And a little after that, we'll be hearing from the show's creators, J.D. Payne and Patrick McKay. We've introduced you to our Harfoots, our Southlanders, to Elrond and Gellibrimbor, and to Gilgalad and Galadriel. But they're all in sort of different parts of the map, uh, you know, at the end of the pilot. But so we said, you know, what if there were this event that told them all that this massive change is coming and they could literally see a fire streak across the sky and land? You know, 
when they say the plot out loud like that, it, it sounds even stupider than it did in the show. I mean, I, we got lots of places, people in different places. We put them all together, same place, same people. Mm. You may know Tolkien's books, The Lord of the Rings or The Hobbit. Why, yes. Yes, I do. And we're still in that world. But that world was the Third Age. Well, how about that? I had no idea. We are in the Second Age. There are books about that, you know. And since you're talking to the showrunners today, maybe mention it to them. Maybe they can squeeze a little bit of uh, actual lore into the second season. Now, I know Amazon don't have the rights to, you know, the Silmarillion, the Unfinished Tales, the history of Middle-earth. And now some of you might be thinking, well, goodness gracious, Johnny, that's a little bit strange, isn't it? Why have Amazon gone out and bought the rights to The Lord of the Rings, The Hobbit, and uh, The Appendices, which is all based in the Third Age, and they went ahead and made a show in the Second Age, the age in which they don't own any of the rights to any of the literature that covers that age. The answer is, I don't know. But guess who does know the Lord? That's right, everyone's favorite stone-faced killer, Morvith Clark. Now, I was gonna try and make a joke about how her face doesn't move, uh, you know, when she's Galadriel. Uh, you know, I was gonna try and compare her to a clock face, because, you know, haha, <laughs> very funny, an animate object, a face doesn't move. But then I realized, a, well, a clock technically does have hands that are constantly moving, so really, a clock face moves more than Morvid Clark's actual face. Yeah, so this material is very familiar to you. Yes. Um, so yeah, my dad read The Hobbit to me. Oh, well, it's a good job you're playing a, a role in the in the second age, isn't it? The Hobbit? Second age? Uh, wait, no. It's not right, is it? <laughs> I won't lie. I do feel sorry for Morvid, even, uh, you know, because this presenter is talking to her like she's a toddler who's just presented her a, a, a mediocre potato painting. Playing Frodo. Oh. Then oh, an audio in the version. Yeah. Oh, wow. Um, Whoa! Oh, take the day off, will you? Yeah. Well, this is an amazing role to take on, and you are so extremely wonderful in it. I mean, she is, and she's a character I, I, I've, <laughs> I definitely am in love with, Gladriel. <laughs> Congratulations. You're probably a terrible person. Her main traits are being manipulative, blind arrogance, and dismissiveness. Oh, but the character, it talks to me. I love the character. It speaks to me because I love to speak about me. You know, I think the people associate Galadriel with being this sort of beatific, you know, uh, goddess type character mm -hmm. who's kind of above things. And this is a moment in her life that is not that. <laughs> no. no, it's not, is it? A lone elf in her family. Yeah. And so... She's dealing with history and the implications of that. And she is the history because she was there the whole time. Oh, that's really interesting. Now that you say that, I see that in your mm. performance. <laughs> yeah, you sound like a lonely bitch. And Will Fletcher, um, who plays Finrod, um, who's a character that like the fandom has been so fascinated by forever because he's so heroic and dies so tragically. Yeah, the tragedy being that he died off screen. If you didn't know... Finrod, in an act of valour, broke free of his chains just before Beren was about to be eaten by a werewolf sent by Sauron. He beat the werewolf to death with his bare hands, uh, and in doing so was mortally wounded, and obviously eventually died. But who cares, right? Because Finrod in Rings of Power is just a pretty little backdrop to make Galadriel look brave and bold. Do you know why Rings of Power sinks while House of the Dragon floats? Do you know why? A ship floats, and a stone cannot. Because the stone sees only downward. But the ship has a secret. For unlike the stone, her gaze is not downward but up. It's been a minute since I heard that quote, and somehow it sounds even stupider than the first time. The amount of pseudo-philosophical tripe in this show is unbelievable. It sounds like they've got Miss Carolina on the writing staff. I believe that our ed education, like such as in South Africa and uh, the Iraq, everywhere like such as, and I believe that they should, uh, our education over here in the U.S. should help the U.S. Uh, or should help South Africa and should help the Iraq and the Asian countries. Her relationship, there is a object that kind of represents her relationship with her brother, which is his dagger. 
which if you look is the two trees of Valinor. Wow, that's uh, that's really clever. Uh, can we also talk about the fact that she held Finrod's dagger up to the throat of both Adar and Sauron, and they're both still alive because she didn't actually stab them. Thank you. The, the, the scourge of the orcs, Galadriel uh, couldn't kill uh, Sauron or Adar. Uh, well done. Uh, so yes, like I say, you, you can thank her for all of the evil within Middle-earth. Uh, saying that though, Adar was actually one of the only characters in the show with like a compelling motive. Uh, and to be fair, he wasn't even that evil. Like, he just felt like he had a right to exist like everyone else, and that was it. The only evil thing I can think that he actually did was when, you know, he told the homeless guy to prove his loyalty by stabbing the kid. Uh, but, I mean, I mean, yeah, yeah I, guess, I, guess you could call, I guess you could call that evil. Yeah, that's, that's, not, that's not the friendliest thing. But to be fair, we didn't even see if he made him go through with it, so it could just be a big debate. Oh, wow. That is beautiful. That's yeah. a detail that, I mean, I, I'm sure that there's so many details in the episode and the yes. series that people just won't be able to absorb unless they're either pointed out or they watch yeah. them 50 times, which hopefully they will. <laughs> That's probably the most evil thing you can do to a person. There's like, there's harming a person, killing a person, and then making a person watch Rings of Power 50 times. <laughs> That's what, like eight hours, wait, eight episodes all about an hour, 50 times. That's what, like about 400 hours? <laughs> Jesus Christ. So there's lots of hidden secret Easter eggs in both the set and the and the costuming yeah. that is really wonderful. And I don't think I we're even aware of them or the cast. Well, if you don't know they're there, how do you know they're there? Oh, yeah, oh, there's, there's Easter eggs everywhere. Probably. So I think Gladriel has a really strong idea of justice, what is right and wrong. Gladriel is the most morally questionable character since, I don't know, Scarlet Witch? But no, Galadriel, oh no, Galadriel doesn't perpetrate evil. You're just wrong, silly little audience. So I think Galadriel has a really strong idea of justice, what is right and wrong, and that she should be a sort of... Justice bringer in a yeah. sense, yeah? Mm, that sounds an awful lot like a dictator to me, but uh, hey, there we go. Keep an eye out for my upcoming video, Are Elves All Commies? Question mark. It should be coming out soon. But but you, now that you're saying this, you are really playing her as a flawed character. You Ooh. know, there there is a sort of like uh, ethereal version of of her that is so I'm so perfect. But seeing her be a flawed person who is a little bit arrogant, Ooh. who is very driven but unrepentant, it's so refreshing. Now don't get me wrong, flawed characters can be more appealing. They can be more relatable. You know, their flaws speak to uh, the human within within all of us. That doesn't mean, however, though, you can take a character that is, you know, that carries themselves well, has gravitas, take all of that from them, turn them into an arsehole, and call that refreshing. That's, that's just doing a shit job. There is a sort of like uh, ethereal version of of her that is so I'm so perfect. As if she's taking a dig at the canon version of Galadriel, the the version written in the box, like the. Hard disagree. If anything, the Rings of Power version of Galadriel thought way more of herself was much more arrogant. Just because Kate Blanchett's Galadriel, for example, wasn't a dick doesn't mean she thinks she's perfect. In the box and in, in the, the Peter Jackson movies, it was everyone around her that commented on, you know, her perfection and her beauty. She never spoke that of herself. Rings of Power Galadriel clearly thinks only of herself and her own opinions. Hard disagree. Was there sort of a unifying idea of what elves would act like? For me, I always try to look at what they wouldn't do. And then with Gladriel, it was like, I wanted to be as close to the edge of that as she could, that there's almost, she's as far away from her elfdom at this point. <laughs> okay. Well, I looked at what elves should be. And I said no. Well, it all makes sense uh, when you put it like that. We were all kind of bound together through the same physicality. What kind of physicality? Because it's very almost balletic in the mm. way that you guys, is that, was that part of the movement that you did? Okay, first of all, balletic? Is that even a word? Second, if it is, it sounds like a penis disease. Ah, poor old Barry. He can't piss at the moment. He's terribly balletic. And third, what about the, the elves movement in this show in any way resembles ballet? <laughs> what? But you know, a pigeon will move out of the way of the car at the last minute that you're like, how did you know? And it's obviously it's all relative to them and they're kind of seeing it all in slow motion type of thing. Yeah. And we had that idea with the elves. <laughs> Anyway, one of the influences for the for the elves in Rings of Power was when was when pigeons fly into cars. 
you did a lot of fight training for this. I did. And, and I would love to hear a little bit about that because you are so beautiful to watch. Um, and then I said, oh, no, I can do it. Can, I'm happy to do another. And they were like, oh, well, Tara needs a rest. No. It was like, what? Sorry. And Taryn is someone who taught us lots of our stunts. Uh-huh. And I didn't realize that for this particular one, it was just Taryn jumping off a ladder. Oh, to pull you down. <laughs> yeah, like so it's like the world's most expensive television show doesn't have a powered rig. They had a member of the stunt crew attached to the other end of the rope, jumping off a ladder. Where did this money go? You know what I do want to talk about a little bit? Your wardrobe, because I love how you weren't sexualized in any way. Like, mm. I really... <laughs> I, I know what she's trying to say, but it kind of comes off like, yo, you didn't look sexy in any of your scenes. The northern waist armor. Oh, yeah, that's what you're wearing in forward waist. Yeah, I thought was just wonderful. This is armor she's been in for hundreds of years oh yeah the armor she's worn for hundreds of years the the, the armor that flew magically by itself all the way to uh, to Numenor like uh, Doctor Strange's cape because uh, well it did shut up yeah you just really dazzle and you inspire uh, women around the world who feel like they have an inner elf <laughs> the fuck does that mean now there's a few people of the the female persuasion that watch my videos did you feel dazzled by uh, Galadriel? Did you feel represented? You'll have to uh, you'll have to let me know about that one. There's so much to love about every episode of The Rings of Power, much of which you might have missed. <laughs> There's so much to love about every episode of The Rings of Power, much of which you might have missed. There's a lot to love about this show, I promise. Just please watch it 50 times. And is he original or is he a canon character or a blend of both or you can't say? The Stranger? The Stranger. Oh, you've got to watch season two. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of. Going off what we've seen so far, that being garbage, childlike writing, we can now operate exclusively under Occam's razor. Ergo, the, the simplest explanation is most likely to be the most favorable. Everything the community predicted before the show even aired has been proven true, but no, you've got to wait till season two to be uh, proven right about this one. <sighs> Who could it be? Who knows? Oh my God, who is it? Not a clue. Scandal. How did you figure out how to summarize the whole first age in such an efficient manner? Y'all <laughs> went through thousands of years of history to catch people up just enough, but not give them too much. It was really masterful. How did you do that? Well, that's simple, really. Just plagiarize the, uh, the intro to The Fellowship and rush through possibly the only part of this story that actually warranted a bit more explanation. Well, yes, the lore behind the Silmarils themselves is very dense, if, if these people were competent writers, I think they would have managed just fine. We're not trying to rewrite or, you know, eliminate or change. We're trying to elide over. Now, I don't know what the f*** that means, but I'm going to call bullshit. The prologue was the hardest thing and the thing that required the most amount of iteration and change to get right. And I say right with air quotes because, you know, we would have loved to have gotten more in there. Well, you should have taken all the filler out of the first episode, which was about, what, about 50 minutes of it, uh, and then extended the prologue. If you would taken all of the unnecessary dramatic pausing between each and every single line of dialogue within the whole of the first season, you just end up with a 20 minute short film. Good to see that uh, even the presenter can't hide how boring these guys are. Or maybe we should have had less and it's just, we it's, were, a, it's We hard. were rewriting it until days before we locked. Wow, that's really fascinating. <laughs> Oh, we built the entire society around the circle and the wheel and the migration, and it's all ties back to the doors and Hobbiton and round forms and Hobbit holes, 100%. Oh my gosh, I love it. <laughs> oh, they're real proud of that one, eh? Uh, wheels around, Hobbit doors around, I wrote the story! This is genius, people. I'm certainly excited for the next episode of the TV show. Oh. I need to see more Galadriel, oh. of course, more Harfoot. Oh. And of course, I need to know who that stranger in the meteor is. Gandalf. Who is that burning man? Gandalf. We'll learn more next time on the podcast, too. No. We'll talk with Markella Cavanaugh, no. a.k.a. Nori Brandyfoot, no. about what it was really like to step into that fiery crater and the surprising Harfoot costume detail you may have missed. No. Until then, bye. Fuck off. Well, that was episode one. That's right. That was just episode one. There are seven more of these things, one for each and every single episode of Rings of Power. 
Will I check out the next episode? Will I jump off a bridge? I don't know. Find out in the next video coming very soon. Like and subscribe, you bitch. And as always, a big shout out to my top tier members, Buzzabon, Flunky, Jax, and Brennus. If I could kiss each of you on each one of your cheeks, that would be 16 kisses if I included your bottoms. The tier two members, Steve the Goat, Dr. Melsky, Saeed, MG, Virgil, Kuno, Sako, Mark Maidens, and we're welcoming Sensei Fang to tier two. It's great to have you. And of course, the tier one patrons and the channel members, mwah, mwah. Uh, a big thank you to all of you. Uh, you've been uh, fantastic. You've all stuck with me. So uh, I, I really appreciate that. I'm going to continue to do what I do. And uh, as soon as the wall and all my redecorating is done, I'll get the poster back up on the wall. And I'm going to get a new poster for uh, this month's uh, patrons. And there we go. Another day, another video. Will you join me for my next one? You better do. But until then, make sure you take care of yourselves, guys. And I'll see you very soon.